Log into your account, scroll down to settings. From there, scroll all the way down until you reach labs. Turn on labs and you are going to find the beta program for our communities. So scroll on down. Uh, basically, if you see anything here that you do want to test out, that you want to play with, um, you can turn them on. So for instance, we've got uh, a new list of features inside our calendars. You might want to turn that on if you want to see what the new features look like. You can always come back in here and turn it off if you don't like the new features that are in there. Um, funnel builder revamps. Uh, more templates for you. We've got enhanced calendar creation for you. Uh, we've got a revamped form builder. Um, there are so many different features that we have in here. New custom fields and your opportunities. New survey builders. Two-way email sync with Gmails. And now at the very bottom, we have communities. So this is slowly being pumped out in everyone's um, accounts right now. Uh, so if you scroll down through here and turn this on, zoink, ta -da, you will now have communities. To create your community inside Techmatics, either a paid one or one that's part of a free access, you're going to go to Memberships and then click on Communities. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your settings and set up your branding. This will allow you to create a name, a custom domain and uh, sort of header images and colours for your community. Then you're going to click on Groups and it will give you the option to create a group. Now you're allowed to create unlimited groups inside your Techmatics Communities Portal. So basically for each group, first we're going to give it a name. So for instance, I've got a membership called my Edupreneur Academy. So I might create a group just for my Edupreneur Academy members. Now you could also create a group, for instance, for a particular course or a challenge that you're running. Maybe you have a summit and you want to create a special community area for everyone who is attending the summit. Maybe you want to have a different community area for your summit speakers. These are just some of the use cases that you might use a community area for. Now, after you've given your group a name, you can then choose a URL for your particular community. So they all start with a subdomain at .communities.io. That subdomain will change based on the domain of your actual account. Um, so I'm going to give it, you know, for instance, Sarah's um, Entrepreneur Academy or Entrepreneur Academy members. Now, do note that regardless of what this URL is, once you've created it, you can actually go up to Sites and Courses, click on URL Redirects and create a pretty link that is yourdomain.com forward slash community, for instance. Um, that's another way you can create a nice customized domain. Uh, group description, that speaks for itself. What is it? Who is it for? And this is the second place, you know, I set up here, you can uh, go to settings to choose your branding, but you can also do it directly from inside this groups area as well. So as you scroll down, um, you can see here, you can choose to just choose your brand colors um, by clicking here. Now this particular, let me just give you the difference uh, here. There's a, there's a slight difference between where you can choose your overall settings. So if you go to settings here and go to your community portal, uh, client portal branding is done in settings. This specific group that we're creating here, this particular community, we can brand this separately. So um, for instance, I could make this community, I'm just gonna pick a color for it over here. Um, you can then upload your favicon. Favicons, by the way, are like these little images here, these little icons that go right at the top. Um, we have got your cover image, your logo. These all are just simply uploads that you add to this particular community area. So let's pretend I added all those and I'm happy with it. We just press create group. Is it gonna let me do that because I didn't fill in all the info? Okay, it's gonna ask me to do a group slug, one sec. All right, so I filled in my slug and I filled in my description. Let's go to create. Boing! So you get a little pop up there, so successfully created, woohoo! And now basically I didn't put a uh, uploaded cover image nor did I upload a logo, but if I'd uploaded the cover image that would show up there, and if I'd uploaded a logo that would show up there. Um, so this is what the client portal will basically look like to your students, your members, your community members when they go to log in. Um, and you can see here, because I have um, updated my own like little 
domain here. Um, it's got my own little URL there. And here's what it looks like. Now, obviously, we don't have anything in here yet. I've only just created this. Um, but this is where, first of all, when you give somebody the URL, um, they either have to log in. So if they're already an existing student, they can log in. Um, or they can request to join the group. That notification will come through to the group owner to approve, very much like Facebook works. Now, over here, you've got the discussion. So this bit here would basically become the thread. Um, just like a Facebook group would work, you'd have all of the threads here, everyone's discussions, comments, um, and everything showing. You then have at the top, learning. Now, this bit here would be connected to any courses that you have connected to this community behind the back end. And then you have people. So this here will show up every person that belongs to the group. It shows the contributors, the moderators, and the admins. Um, and obviously, because everyone has a client portal, it also has um, the name and details of the person in that group as well. How good is that? Now, I haven't given access to anyone, uh, my, sorry, my test account here, but if I was to, for instance, press join group, I just wanna show you what will happen from the um, student's perspective. First of all, it's gonna pre-fill my name, um, but it's actually gonna ask me to log in or sign up and create an account. So basically, you're only gonna have people in your communities uh, with an email address. So this could be a fantastic lead generation tool for you if you're creating free communities where you're gonna share information and training that you wouldn't share openly, perhaps on social media, for instance. Um, you're at least actually using it as a lead generation platform to collect email addresses and create that community. Of course, if this is a paid course or a paid program, this is excellent because you're not gonna get anyone other than your paying members inside your community. Ding! If you've got any questions, let me know.